All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to the Steve Malsberg Show. Welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. Uh, joining us right now is our friend, Steve Emerson, Executive Director of the Investigative Project on Terrorism. Hello, Steve. Hi, good to see you. Good how, to be with you. Yeah, how are you? I'm fine. Good, good. All right. Always glad to talk to you. Um, I was, uh, before we get to, uh, to, to Kenya and that whole thing, um, uh, there was a, um, unbeknownst to me, I must confess, even though I work here and live in New Jersey, uh, there was a, um, a Muslim Day Parade in New York City. I guess it's an annual event held on the same uh, Sunday of, uh, of uh, September, the last Sunday in September every, uh, every year. Although, I don't think uh, last Sunday was the last Sunday. I think this Sunday is the last Sunday. But nonetheless, um, it, 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 uh, on the surface, it appeared, you know, uh, uh, benign enough and uh, uh, good intentioned enough uh, with the people marching. And uh, but there was some. If you look a little below the surface, and not even very far below the surface, if you just look closely, you'd see some uh, disturbing things. Correct? Right. Well, we actually took video of it, and we, there were people there with Al Qaeda flags. Uh, with uh, jihad flags, with uh, Muslim Brotherhood, uh, you know, pro-Muslim Brotherhood. This was not a Muslim day parade that was all-inclusive of all Muslims. This was an Islamist, a radical Islamist day parade uh, that excluded moderate Muslims. Um, and um, it featured, uh, and we took pictures of it, it's on our website, uh, www.investigativeproject.org, of those, uh, rad those Muslims carrying flags of the Khalifa, the, the, the caliphate, those calling for jihad. Um, pretty radical stuff. In fact, Ray Kelly, uh, you know, actually participated in the parade. Uh, unbeknownst to him, uh, naivete you can only attribute it to, uh, didn't realize that it was composed of even speakers that called for the restoration of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. Uh, so this was not your typical, you know, ethnic day celebration like Italian Day or Israel Day or Irish Day. This had a particular political bent to it, and it was radical. Yeah, six marchers proudly waving the flag of jihad, uh, often used as a rallying call for uh, radical Islamists, uh, you know, who call for vi violent battle uh, and the organization of a global caliphate, as you as you uh, talked about, and and that feeds right into. Um, you know, basically support for, I mean, uh, you know, without mentioning it by name, support for what happened in Kenya, does it not? Well, absolutely. Look, um, the, 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 the flags calling for jihad or mentioning the shahada uh, are the, the, motto, the mottos of the Muslim Brotherhood, um, the, the mottos of al-Qaeda, the, the mottos of al-Shabaab, which is there is no God but Allah, and Allah is his messenger. Um, meaning that, you know, only one religion reigns supreme and should be the one that rules the world. That's Islam. It doesn't mean all Muslims ascribe to it, but it's certainly that motto of the Islamists who increasingly have become a dominant force in world politics. And it's not only those that are a threat that carry out attacks like al-Shabaab. It's the ones that empower them or that motivate them, like the ones in the Muslim Day Parade. Yeah, it, it, it is very, very troubling and very, very disturbing. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit uh, about uh, Kenya. The Justice Department today saying that uh, there is absolutely no evidence that any Americans were involved in the uh, in the attack uh, at, at the mall in Kenya. But the, you know that aside, whether that's accurate or not, uh, still in all, Al Shabaab is uh, uh, has recruited many, many Americans uh, to Somalia, and some of them are dead, but some of them uh, uh, we don't know where they are. Correct. They've recruited dozens of Americans. We don't know the exact number, and an even larger number of Europeans. And these are um, not just uh, ex-Somali expatriates, but these are white converts who still have their American or European passports, which allows them to go back into their home countries with impunity. And that's the danger. Because I think this was a seminal moment for al-Shabaab. It had been splintering. It was on the ropes. It had lost a lot of territory. It lost support. But this, nothing, perversely, nothing succeeds by success. So all the attendant international publicity, the fact that they carried out an elaborate attack like in Mumbai, killing many people, they scoped out this place with extensive reconnaissance. They knew this was an upscale international mall that would involve foreigners being killed. They specifically targeted non-Muslims, selecting Muslims out and saying, if you're Muslim, you will not be killed. That wasn't reported, by the way, in the New York Times or the Washington Post. And, in fact, um, some blogger pointed out that 92% of the stories about the attack 
never even mentioned the word Islam in their story. Yeah. So, um, you know, this, this, you know, this, this continued attempt to, to, you know, provide cover for radical Islam is infuriating because it basically provides cover for the jihadists. If you don't mention the word radical Islam, you don't mention the word Islamic jihad, you don't mention the word jihad, you don't mention the word militant Islam, you're basically providing cover for these jihadists to continue carrying it out because they know they'll be protected from any type of, of uh, external appropriate. appropriate. It is, it is very, very uh, frightening uh, indeed. Uh, one final uh, word. Did, did you make uh, the uh, care list of Islamophobes? Yes, I did. I'm very proud, uh, as Alan West was also made it, uh, and uh, now I can qualify as a public relations master because now I'm guilty of mesmerizing 300 million Americans <laughs> to believing that Islam is dangerous. Well, so you know, I, I want to thank them. So I, if I get contracts for this, <laughs> I, I have to thank them. And you know, you know who's on the um, along with Dick Durbin and the Democrats on the Homeland Security Committee. You know who's on their good list, don't you? The good list included uh, Dick Durbin and Chris Christie. Chris Christie, absolutely. Well, and you and I have right, talked about right. his judicial appointments and uh, not not to speaking out against the mosque uh, at, at ground, the proposed Ground Zero mosque, et cetera. So uh, to get a badge of honor from uh, from Care, uh, I, 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 he can't be too happy. But knowing him, he might be. Hey, Steve, always appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. You're very welcome. Take care. Steve Emerson, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very brave Steve Emerson, Executive Director of the Investigative Project on Terrorism. Okay, when we come back, Penn State. Uh, Penn State had some of the sanctions uh, against it lifted yesterday. We'll tell you what that ha was all about, why it happened. And the Penn State story that, uh, that uh, John Ziegler has been trying to get out. Is there an analogy to the... The book that I did an interview with, The Book of Matt, that no other media outlet will touch. We'll talk to John Ziegler about it on The Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio. The Steve Malzberg Show.